a fetish is something they worship or they uh, desire or, or like, mm -hmm. or even have a sexual attraction to. Leather clubs came out of motorcycle clubs oh. after, after World War II. Because that's, that's where you had a, a large contingency of men together for the first time. And after World War II, they all got together, especially ones that found, their, found themselves, because before that, they had no way of finding each other. You call it a what now? A scene. When, you're having, when I'm having a scene with someone, that means I'm engaging you, and we are doing something BDSM related together. That means we are having a one-on-one -on -one, um, exchange and I either may be dominating you or you may be dominating me and I'm gonna be uh, submitting to you or you may be submitting to me, Antonio. Yes. So I'd like to have a scene with you. Okay. Just one-on-one. -on -one. And what I'd like to do is give, it, give you a flogging demo. Okay. And show you what that's like. We back. Yo. Oh, whoa. Oh, the Matrix. Matrix. Oh. Going to the world. What's up? You? <laughs> she got wings. She I like that wings. Don't that go back, Batman. girl. Get him, Patty. Batman's cousin. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Batman's cousin here. What's up? What's up? I Welcome, hey, everybody. Child. How's What's everybody? Up, All right. I'm loving this effect from all. Oh, look at hell. I know. Everybody's hell. extravagant. Correct. Look at these chains and chain oh gang my God, going down fabulous. over here. <laughs> so fabulous. Breathe. What's cooking, That's Sean? What's about? We're gonna do a, a, a Mexican theme today, so. Beef flautas. Who needs a taco Tuesday when you can have flauta Friday? Seasoned ground beef is rolled in a flour tortilla and fried to perfection. I got a question. With the variety of people out here, you know, when you're looking for a certain taste or a certain delight, do you go to different places to find that? Or is there like one specific place that's your spot, you get everything and you want in there? Or? Delight in food or? No. <laughs> I was going to say that's Thank all I got a whole lot of cold in Delight in oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Or delight in an organ. Which one? <laughs> I, I mean in a companion. Oh. oh. Go on, Cheryl, you got that? Oh. Well, beef flouches are always nice. <laughs> <laughs> Get to talk about relationships, what can I say? Well, well how about you? <laughs> let y'all go. Me? Um, man, I stay at home in front of the uh, fireplace reading my Bible with a cup of milk. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You're kitty, kitty. Wow. No, no. If I, <laughs> no, I if I want to get out and about out. Know, I just, <laughs> okay. I know where to go okay, and get no. what I'm looking for. So. <laughs> you know where to go to get where you want. Yeah, well, yeah. We all have needs. Yeah. Yes. Right. Indeed. Right. Some have them tucked under their beds or in the closet somewhere. You know. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting, <laughs> this be an interesting <laughs> conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, no. talk about yeah. difference and needs and all that. We got Sway coming, oh. and uh, we're going to loosen this conversation up. So oh. we're like, all right, oh. right y'all. <laughs> Suede Onyx is president of the Southwest Chapter of Onyx, a BDSM kink and fetish club for people of color. Onyx is the longest existing fraternity of its kind, with nine active chapters across the U.S. serving the LGBTQIA community since its founding in 1995. The organization grew out of the Chicago leather scene as a more inclusive club for people of color. Suede, like so many others, maintains a professional career as a sales specialist by day. Suede opts to keep his professional and recreational lives separate. It was with the goal of sustaining the organization during COVID that Suede initially ran for president and has maintained the position for almost two years thus far. Suede is most proud of charitable contributions to LGBT POC groups in the community. 
Since the start of the Onyx Southwest chapter in 2015, they have given close to $30,000 in donations to their benefactors. Chris, I know you've had some leather experiences. I have. You have? Oh. Okay, do you want to talk yeah, about them? The, the, yeah, these are my clothes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it. That's it, no. Tell me I'm about from it. Chicago, no I like bondage. leather. <laughs> have you ever been tied up during sex, anyone? I, have not. I don't like being tied up. Yeah, you know, it, that's a little restrictive for me. I did it one time. And I didn't like it, that kind of control. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. one time I, I hooked up with two women, uh, and they actually used me to get to each other because they I was like the mutual friend. <laughs> they got me in a bed, handcuffed me to the bed, no. tied, blindfolded me, and went to town on each other. Was, oh. I, you were a prop. I was a prop. <laughs> <laughs> they, they used me for what they wanted. Did they give each you a other. safe word? <laughs> no, they just, uh, I just heard all kinds of sounds. <laughs> but you felt sense. nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Did you ask to be let go? Like, <laughs> no, I, was, it was, I, knew, I knew what happened. I figured it out you pretty quickly. I, you rolled with it. Yeah. So you just went to sleep? Yep. Oh, okay. Took a nap. <laughs> now, I was with a guy one time. He spanked, a, 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 it was like not too hard, but hard. But I'm just like, any hit. You know, I just, mm -hmm. you know, yes. it's not my thing. Everybody got the thing. The hitting, Why? the spanking on the ass. If I'm having sex and you spank me on the ass, I, it snaps me out of the sex of it all the time, like every single time. But I love the people who stay in the moment. So well, you don't like a little bit of spanking? None, not one nah, bit. When nah. I didn't like it when my mom did it, and oh, I certainly mm. don't like it So you as think that you associate the spanking to your That's mom's? Possible. Maybe. That's possible. I remember attending Lather Flats once here, here in L.A., actually. Mm -hmm. And it was a very interesting experience in terms, they had all these stations set up. And I know that like what you were describing, when it comes to like the pain part, like for me, that just didn't do anything for me. But what's interesting um, is they were also doing piercing at, at Leatherfest. And I decided to get a nipple piercing. And so that was, you know, in that moment, I said, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I hadn't even really thought about it much. And so I did, and I had it for a decade. And then at some point, I just decided to, to take it out. I have been to a, 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 a bondage club, you know. Okay. I used to be in several different games along the way in my life. <laughs> different kind of industries. Yes, 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 I must admit. And by that time, I, when I was in that game, I, I did happen through a club. And it was quite interesting. And I think I'm more of a warrior. Is that what they call oh, it? Oh, a warrior? Do you yeah, like to watch? I, yeah. Interesting. Because it was cool. What, and what I does mean, that evoke? Like, I'm curious, mm, like, what does watching evoke for you? I think it takes me back to he hearing my mother and father oh. when I was little. You know, and I used to sit all the way up at the top of the stairs and listen. Oh, you listen? <laughs> so maybe that's what <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Are you an exhibitionist? I can't say that I would necessarily be um, aroused by someone watching me have sex. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I also would not be completely distracted by it. Mm -hmm. I think my experience in, with the leather community, because um, international Mr. Leather uh, competition is is really kind of huge off in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was introduced to it, one of the first things that um, I found the most curious was that uh, there was a, a gentleman that had asked me if I would not wear um, my deodorant. Oh. Um, oh yeah. And mm -hmm. so, and I said, okay, well, why? <laughs> why? Why would not wear deodorant? And they said, I, I like that natural scent. Yeah, so there was something about my natural scent that they preferred. desired and preferred. And so that, that, is, that was sort of my introduction and nuance to it. And I said, well, I said, oh, okay, well, I don't like my natural scent. So I don't, <laughs> you know, so. I, oh, that's cute and all, no, but I don't know that I can I can provide that yeah, uh, okay. experience for you. And so it was it was one of those things where it was a learned moment, you know. Mm. So when I was younger, it was kind of that thing where I'm thinking I want to smell good, and you know, because in my mind, you got all this hot ass leather on in the summertime, you're gonna start to stink. Yes. And so yeah, not realizing that that was actually something that was um, for some people quite appealing. Mm. So that there was a lot there's a lot of nuances. Have you ever been to Folsom? Um, I have not. Have you? Falsum is No, but I've been to something called Claw, which is, mm -hmm. I wish I knew what it stood for. We'll have to ask Onyx, Sway Onyx. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a leather convention in Cleveland. Mm. 
Oh, okay. And I have been to that, and it is, ooh, something else. It's just, it's just very much sexual freedom. I mean, oh. whatever you want to do, it's... Oh, Lord. It's, Sounds good to me. And it's, I mean, it's really out there. It's really out there. It was, mm -hmm. You know, even for me, I, I think I, I've seen it all. And, uh, yeah, there's... <laughs> some... Was there anything in particular that was like... Like you said, you've seen it all. So what kind of took it to the next level? Well, for me, something that's out there would be fisting. Okay. Uh huh. That is, you know, Cheryl. Do you know what that is? I do. You do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do well. Make a fist, Cheryl. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I just. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm scared to make the fist, but more power to whoever. Okay. You feel me? I mean, and, yeah. And I'm gonna go back to you in the early. I mean, you know, we. I came through the era of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I was in gay bars, cocaine, three, four women. I mean, I've done it now. We just didn't add leather. And I appreciate well, that. So, I appreciate yeah. that that mindset of whatever you want to do is okay. And that's what I find in the leather community. It is one of the most accepting groups of people that you will ever be around. That is just from that's my true. experience. Well, I better yeah, go with the too. guest when he that's leaves. You, oh. How do you feel about your limits being pushed? Because I know that's you know part of it too is mm -hmm. being able yeah. to experience other yeah. things in a. You, you said something was really important about accepting and all that, but it's mm -hmm. a really safe and safe. trusting wow. environment. Okay. So it allows you mm -hmm. the space and opportunity to be pushed beyond your limits. Okay. Is that something that when you hear me say that, does that evoke a mm, wanting to lean into or maybe go, mm, a curiosity? Not so sure about no, that. it's a curiosity of like mm -hmm. what that feels like to be. To have your boundaries pushed, Push. like I, you know, I don't. I'm very like, this is my boundary. You know, no, mm -hmm. stop. And I'm sitting here thinking, if we never push our boundaries, how do we know what we like? That's kind of what growth is about, right? Okay. Yeah, but I think also, and which is great that Suede is going to be here to talk on this because I think the Onyx community, again, was one of these communities that was developed because it is part of the leather community, but it is a leather community of color. Yes. Oh. So that I think it's important wow. to make sure Very. that we talk about that so that it, it was the idea that there there was or there exists a leather community that may not have been as welcoming, welcoming okay. or mm -hmm. encouraging mm -hmm. to people of color. Mm. We should talk about this, too, because this could really be controversial with America's relationship to slavery, because mm -hmm. that whole master-slave dynamic yes. that exists within oh my gosh. Um, yes. the leather community, and particularly when it's an interracial dynamic. Oh my gosh. And so I, I, yes. we ought to make sure that we kind of dig into that, because a lot of people take offense, particularly to some white man walking around with a black man in a collar yes. and on a leash, yes. or him being in the slave position <laughs> mm -hmm. and trying to understand what that dynamic is about. Is it about re... I don't... I won't even suspect what, what? it's about, but we'll talk more about it when we get back. Yes. That thanks to the fetish. I, well, I think that that's a great question because I think that that's where um, some people will consider the leather community a fetish or mm. or um, or dating outside of their race a fetish. There are different things that people are deliberately choosing because of the way it makes them feel in an sort of intense way that now um, fetishizes it versus making it about feelings. It's not about this uh, individual okay, experience. It's about action. this. I, if I see somebody with leather on, there's something about them in the leather oh, that, wow. you know, that that excites me because this is now I've now fetished that that kind of um, visual and, and and that or just like even with like the dirty person dirty diapers with, or like no like deodorant to, I I, mm -hmm. did, I I like the fact that you I, your natural scent you know that and again that turns it's the just, person on arouses them. yes because that person wasn't desiring me as a person but uh -huh. me was smelling like that right. uh, you know suppose so if that we never had deodorant. Some, Wow. Isn't that an interesting thing? When you said that, I thought we would all smell normal if we never had it. But of course, we use it in this country. Her, her <laughs> <he> also, <laughs> what? Ah. God, what? also thinks uh, in the in maybe the leather community there is a glorification of the man. Oh. And so that is you know I've had people, you know, lift your arm up and they're like, and like sniffing oh. and licking oh, and all yeah. that, and, I, and I'm like I'm like ah that's gross, but you know it's there's something ah. that's you know. Well, it could, it could be, it could be, it could be not man, it could be mammal, you know, because we are all still mammals. And I mean, if you think about, and I don't want it to sound weird, but it's gonna sound weird, because like even dogs sniff each other, and that idea of 
someone covering that. that oh, that's an interesting perspective. You know, yeah. that, that, that isn't a desire. It's the idea. And it's leather, which is also mammal. It smelled too, right? So it's it's interesting too. <laughs> I think we smell. probably oh, we gonna have a whole laundry list of questions. This way. <laughs> no, that's so bad. Yeah. Oh, oh, there, oh, there we go. Oh, let's let's get to I it. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. He couldn't wait. arrive sooner. Sway, <laughs> come Learned on. Learned a lot in. today. How are you? And I'm hoping to learn. Good to see you. Hey, thank you. Hey, he brought some toys. Got my toys for you. Toys. Actually, my tools. Oh, the tools. Okay, we're gonna hang them there for right now. For now, I'm gonna hang them. Okay. And then and I we can... put a tool rack up just for you. Uh, all right, now. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Clearly. <laughs> Welcome, Sway. Right. How are you? Awesome. Thank you. Yes. I'm good. How are you guys? Thank hey, you so much. Welcome good. to the house, to the house, to the house. It's good to be here. Yes. Good to meet all of you. Great. Thank you. Welcome you to the welcome to the house. We've been sitting here chatting about the community, and uh, we have a, a, all kind of questions. We have lots of curiosity. <laughs> can we start with maybe defining what leather is from? Um, sure, I will. Um, leather is is what I'm wearing right now. I sometimes refer to to it as full cow. Um, <laughs> you, you, we can be in full cow, oh, or okay. um, and oh, then oh, oh, okay. Hold on. Here comes, comes a full cow. Just, 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 just on. You come to full cow. Uh, he's serving full cow. No. <laughs> you can. You, he could be. <laughs> <laughs> Birria tacos, straight from Jalisco, Mexico. These tacos are big on flavor. The beef is stewed and marinated to perfection, then shredded and paired with cheese to create this mouth-watering meal. <laughs> Full cow. I'm sorry, Antonio. Full cow. Full cow. Full cow. Full Full cow. And I'm, I'm just joking. Re these days, people, um, it's whatever you want to embody. Um, because people have an aversion to leather, um, people want to go vegan and get away from that sort of thing. Oh, so yeah. they wear faux leather. Okay. So it can be anything. Kind of leather kind of is encompassing, mm -hmm. and it's whatever you're into, whether it's leather, whether it's faux leather, whether it's rubber, whether it's latex, mm. um, whether it's athletic gear. Um, this is what I consider everything kinky. Mm -hmm. And ah. it just, it just, we typically say leather because the community came out of, initially out of leather. And leather, leather clubs came out of motorcycle clubs oh. after, after World War II. Because that's that's where you had a, a large contingency of men together for the first time, and after World War II, they all got together, especially ones that found their found themselves. Because before that, they had no way of finding each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially gay men, they they didn't know this. They didn't know it, and then they're forced to be together. And so when you're in close quarters, then you can find out you're attracted to somebody. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see that you like me. <laughs> ah. And that you, you know, you don't have to have this guard, especially if you're sleeping with somebody next to somebody. But anyway, after World War II, I mean, they formed these motorcycle clubs and they didn't want to go back to the regular lifestyle. And so they started having to wear leather because of you have chaps to ride your motorcycles to protect you from the weather. Mm -hmm. A lot of people also love the uniforms that they had in the military. So mm -hmm. the whole military aesthetic um, came out of World War II, where people love uniforms, and that transitioned into the leather community. And you do see the cop uniforms, you, you see all exactly. kinds of uniforms, actually. Exactly, and there are, um, even here in um, LA, we have uniform groups, um, and we, like, you know, there's a couple of them here, and they, they exclusively are into uniforms. And How much is like army, un ar army uniform? I it can mean, be uniform army you uniforms. It can be, like he said, a policeman uniform. Okay. It can be a fireman uniform. It's just whatever the uniform is, it can be defined by that organization. And if they like it and they have, if they fetishize it, a fetish mm -hmm. is something they worship or they uh, desire or, or like, mm -hmm. or even have a sexual attraction to, then that's something they gravitate to. And then they are like, well, we like this, and this is how it makes us feel. Because usually when I put on my first piece of leather when, that I ever bought, it was a sense of empowerment. I, that was okay. the, what I was just about to ask you about power. Mm. So I heard empowerment, yep. but I wanted to ask this question about power, because when you think of uniforms, you're talking about the military, World War II, you're talking about motorcycle. How much of this, how, how much does power play into this whole 
leather conglomerate, if you will. It's like anything else. When you get up in the morning and put on your, uh, when you go to work and you put on your suit, your tie, all of that, you're putting on your armor. Mm -hmm. True. When you put on leather gear, it's kind of similar. You take on a different facade and you, you your mindset changes. Mm -hmm. okay. So I go from, okay, I'm just average Joe. So now once I put on my leather gear, I'm like, okay, now I'm a leather man. I feel stronger today. I mean, you see, we repping for you, right? Hey, you and are you strong. Know, you I mean, are a strong I, what, woman. It, well, I'm saying when this fabric, you know, and when I feel leather, it's just, uh, the first time I even connected that. Yeah. It's a sense of, oh, strength. 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 Right. Yeah. It's strength and it's Cow. also primal. Oh, mm. that's what you said. Mm -hmm. Mammal. Yeah. Yes. So you go you go back to this animal aesthetic and, and you smell it, you feel it. Like when I wear my, my, my pants, I don't wear underwear. I want to feel the leather. I want to feel all of it. Because I, you know, I relate to it because I, I love it. And that's what most people that are in the leather community, they gravitate to because that's what they want to they want to feel those feelings and have that experience. What unites everyone in the leather community? Is it the, uh, the interest in kinks? It could be kinks, it could be uniforms, it could be BDSM um, specific, um, if that's what you're into. Um, what is BDSM for those who have no it, idea? It's, um, it's uh, bondage, domination, sadomasochism. There are different forms of all of that. But when you experience that and, and do that in a, in a setting, then you're, you, can, you can do BDSM without having it be a negative term. And it could be pain and it could be pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can do something to you or do something with you where I don't hurt you at all, but you're experiencing something that's mm -hmm. enlightening from just me touching you blindfolding you and touching you somewhere you unexpected mm -hmm. will heighten your, your sensories. Um, Make and, it that much more pleasurable. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, because you don't know what to expect next. Right. It's a surprise. You're being touched in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting. When you start doing BDSM with someone, you are taking your, your sexuality and your sex and your connection with somebody to a different level. I call it a headspace. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and because you're basically turning over your control to someone else, it's a power exchange. Ah, there we go. Spooky. Oh, that's, that's, that's that's it. It's a it's a power exchange. Yeah. Trust. And it you you do have to have trust. You need to establish some boundaries with people, and especially with a beginner, with someone that's never experienced bondage, you need to talk to them first. How would you do that? Like for example, and of course, you know, we don't have a bed today, but if we were said, oh, you know, I'm curious, I'm a beginner, you know, how would you walk me through, and I don't like giving up control. So me in particular, and you're, you're wanting to show me something, you want to excite me, or you want to have me experience something, surprise, because I like a surprise. Right. How would you engage me? I'd have a consultation with you first. I, that's what happened with me with my first sir. Mm -hmm. He actually interviewed me for an hour and a half to find out what, made me tick what I liked, what I dislike. Mm -hmm. I'd, I would have to find that out with you first I see. before I do anything with you, because I don't want to hurt you. I need to understand what you've experienced. Um, also, even if you've had some trauma in your life. Ah, good, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. um, because it's happened to me. I was molested at, uh, when I was 11 mm -hmm. and was choked out by a guy and he left marks. So mm -hmm. I have an aversion to being choked, mm. but you know, you can still participate in BDSM and still in, enjoy it and have it not be a trigger for you. But you need to do the work ahead of time. That means outside work with a therapist. I, oh my God, I never even thought something could be so tender and caring. I mean, I've always just jumped in the bed, bang, bang, bang. You no, know? it should always it's be tender and caring. I should, I should understand what your likes and dislikes are before I engage you. It's safe, sane, and cons consensual, as wow. we would say it in Onyx. So what I like to do is ask you, what are your likes and dislikes? What do you like to do in the bedroom? So I do like the idea of power exchange. Okay. Um, I like being pleased. Okay. So I tend to be more of a dom. What does that look like? In charge, for in me. In charge how? What do you uh, do with your partner? I'm directing. 
I'm saying not that, but this. Okay. That kind of thing. What else do you like to have done to you? I like to be touched. In what way? And where? Um, everywhere. Okay. Do you have sensitive places on your body? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You understand the term flogging? Don't, don't like that. Have you experienced it? Yes. And did the person talk to you first about no. what they were going to do? So this well, is... No, no, that's not true. I'm sorry. Yes, they did talk to me about what they were going to do. And, and how did they start out with you? Did they just start wailing on you? No, no. Okay. No, they built up to it slowly. That's good. So that's... the first couple strikes were inconsequential. But good. it got probably by strike three or four, it was clear that... It wasn't your thing. Wasn't, yeah, that wasn't my thing. <laughs> and do you like to be tied up? No. First, like I would have that converse, this conversation with you and say, okay, you may not like being flogged, then, but maybe you can be bound in a different way, like in a straitjacket mm -hmm. or maybe in a sleep sack, which is another thing. Mm -hmm. To me, um, that's something you What if you, you were doing do. something and then we got to a point when I was like, ah, how would I let you know Then you've that's gone where we have far? safe words okay. or signal because okay. you may be bound and gagged. Mm -hmm. mm. And so then you need to signal me in a different way. Maybe with a raising of a thumb because I may have your, your, th your fingers uh, free or mm -hmm. you, you may signal me with a sound. I see. And, and then that's when I would take you out of, we call it a scene. Like if no, I wait actually- wait a minute, I can't hear. You call it a what now? A scene, when, you're having, when I'm having a scene with someone, that means I'm engaging you and we are doing something BDSM related together. Um, specifically, if I'm flogging you, if I'm tying you up, if I'm doing something like that with you, um, that means we are having a one-on-one -on -one, um, exchange and I either may be dominating you or you may be dominating me and I'm gonna be uh, submitting to you or you may be submitting to me. This is wonderful within itself to even think that a conversation like this takes place anywhere when it comes to touch. Do you do both roles? I do. Is that normal? Is that common? Yeah, I was wondering that. It is very common. Some people have apprehension. Um, I think within our community, especially in the black community, um, people associate bondage with um, slavery. Oh. And um, you really have to be present and understanding with the person you are, are engaging with um, to separate these emotions. So, and there are people that want to do certain things, but you need to be very clear about what's good for you and what isn't good for you. And that's why I say it's always good to have a conversation first because I may do something to you that you don't like that could trigger you. How did you get into this? Uh, I mean, where, how did I get into it? Where, where are you from? And tell us about you. I'm originally from um, South Carolina, okay. Columbia. I'm the, you know, the Southern boy. Yes. But I, I moved out here um, in 2010 from Atlanta, by way of that. But um, I started getting into. Sway. Yeah. We, we do need to stop and take a break. Sure. So can we go to this break and perfect. then come back and pick up? Yes. Absolutely. That would be awesome. Oh, and his voice is voice. so calming. That's what I was right? getting ready to say. He just you right in before you know it, y'all tied right, up I'm beside I know, <laughs> in a straight jacket on the floor in the house. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> oh, see, I look at the touch of me. Lean over there. <laughs> I'm just a Southern boy from South Carolina that moved out to California and got exposed and enlightened and... Um, Turned out? Oh, Turned out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Turned out when I came to California and actually met my, found my tribe. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, and it's, it's been a joy ever since. I've, I've found people that I liked. I, I found experiences that I didn't have in the, um, in the South that I had out here. Um, because there's not very many um, leather organizations and clubs in the Deep South. There just isn't. There was only one. And you don't have the same kind of exposure. There's several here in California, whether it's here in L.A. or San Francisco um, in different places. I would say California is the largest um, community for leather and kink and rubber and everything. <laughs> Aside from there's Chicago. Don't get me wrong, Chicago, they ah. got their uh, leather kinky folks there too. So, um, and New York, 
but it's all usually in the major cities. Cleveland, we got a shout out Cleveland. What does CLAW stand for? It's Cleveland Annual Weekend. It's that simple. Oh. Okay. Mm. Oh. It only happens on a weekend? Yeah. It happens on a weekend, and oh. it's sort of like an educational leather um, gathering where they teach you different classes in different types of bondage, which you probably saw. Is it similar to Folsom? Folsom is an outside street festival. Oh, okay. Um, a lot of these conferences, they, they're like uh, meetups mm -hmm. where you can actually meet other um, people in the community Especially if you're a beginner and you want to learn more about rope, you may not have that exposure, especially if you're in a small city. Mm -hmm. You can go to these places and meet these people and learn how to do these things. Learn how to do shibari rope. Safe. Safely. Yes, that's the Properly. key. Properly. Yes. Not just going to your leather store, picking up a flogger or a whip and hurting somebody. Mm -hmm. So how welcoming is this for yes. people of color? Mm -hmm. it's, it's very welcoming now. Onyx first started in 1995 in Chicago. Mm. And it was, it came out of, um, as a result of not having space for us. We never had space. Uh, there was quite a bit of um, uh, segregation in the community mm -hmm. uh, and exclusion. Still is. Still is, but we're making a difference. So there are a group of guys in, in Chicago that actually formed Onyx and it came out of IML because like leather people like to stand and pose normally. Mm -hmm. But oh. people of color, we, we like want to bring whole, in a dance yeah. element. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, well, <laughs> let's create something for us. Um, and that's what it was. They created an organization to where they could have community, where they can have space, mm -hmm. where they can support each other um, and, <sighs> and, and address issues that are relevant to the POC community. Mm -hmm. Since that time, over all the 27 years it's been in, in existence, we've formed nine chapters. Um, Onyx Southwest, that's the chapter that I'm president of here, our organization has been here, it was, we're coming up on seven years because we didn't have it here. So your chapter is in LA? It's in LA. Uh -huh. Go ahead. We represent LA, New Mexico, Colorado, um, Arizona, so, um, and Vegas. And then the next chapter after we started, there's a chapter up in San Francisco now. It's Northwest. So do you guys like host like play parties or like if somebody wanted to come? Because it's interesting, you know, you, you, you talked to me and we talked, you know, we kidded about how soothing your voice is and all of that. But I know that if we, someone wants to just drop in to an event, right, and you show up, are you going to get that kind of engagement or are people expecting you to have some level of um, experience, like if everything's happening, how do you show up and become so a part? So if you're new to the scene and never had any experience, what we do, we, every month we have a weekly, what we call a beer bus, mm. because we are also um, a nonprofit, a 501c3, and we also give back to the community because no one else has helped our community before. So if we don't give right. back and bring up, we need to be uplifting each other. Nice. And that's what we're trying to do Ooh, here. Ooh, say it again. So, but we could still uplift, uplift each other and still be kinky guys and yeah. kinky women and <laughs> yes. kinky people. That was my question. You is know, there, what is is there a role for for women and and drag yeah, queens the, and trans? Yeah, we we accept everybody. We have trans members. We have bisexual members. We have women. We have everybody in our group. You know, everybody's welcomed. So when you, when you talk about the things that you do in the community and that that's a big focus for the organization, what are some examples? So some of the examples, we just recently gave um, a donation and usually our, our, our help is from what the money would that we raise in our beer bus. But okay. like we just gave um, a donation to the Black AIDS Institute. Nice. Next month we're gonna give to Reach LA, the LA um, f Food Bank and then to the LA Homeless Association. Wow. Mm -hmm. nice. So we try to pick out throughout the year different organizations we're gonna give back to financially. Rotate. And we're also doing demos. So we're, we're actually putting on a whole entertainment scene for people, for people that are new, people that are experienced, oh, can, um, and actually see what we do out in public. For so me we're gonna take a break and when we come back from the break, we'll get to play a little bit. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, you absolutely. Up I'm up for it. Antonio. Yes. So I'd like to have a scene with you. Okay. Just one-on-one. -on -one. 
And what I'd like to do is give, it, give you a flogging demo okay. and show you what that's like. But before we go there, I want to show you and tell you what I'm going to do to you. Okay. With your consent. Okay. So what I want to do is position you in front of the island. Okay. And then I want to blindfold you, turn you around, have you assume the position. And then what I'm going to do is take the flogger, mm -hmm. this first one, which is just a suede falls. These are called falls, by the way. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to slowly, gradually start hitting you with the flogger and see how you respond. Okay. And through the whole thing, I'll check in with you to see where you are, see how you're receiving it, and see if you're okay with it. Okay. If you're okay with it, then what I'm going to do is take it up as far as intensity. Okay. And so it'll be an exchange, but I need you to communicate with me throughout okay. as I check in with you. Perfect. And then so I'll bring you up to a level where I think you've had enough, and then what I'm going to do is bring you down. Okay. Slowly. And then I'll change over to a different flogger. This has got more falls. And it's actually very similar to, um, it's like a thud when it hits you, but it's like massaging your back okay. in a way. So that's what I'm going to bring you down with, and then we'll be finished. Okay. All right. All right. Are you ready to do it? I'm ready. Okay. Oh. Not you was all anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Can we watch? Should I keep my jacket on I or take it off? I would love for you to watch. You would? Just, oh. I want you to. Ooh. Assume the position. Very good. How does that feel? Feels okay. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You okay with me taking it up a little bit? Yeah, take it up a notch. Okay. Actually stimulating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. threshold, which is good. So I'm going to switch floggers. Okay. This one's softer. It's supposed to be meant like a massage. 
Love a massage. Yeah. I call it the thumper. That's <laughs> what I named it. How do you it's, feel, Cheryl? Oh, Just how do you feel? What an experience. <laughs> I thought I was a voyeur, but when it got louder, I couldn't even look. My heart was racing. And when I realized more than ever, because I'm with Chris and Chris is holding me, we touching each other, me and Chris. So like, <laughs> really, I held Chris's hand. And Aaron's there, and we were jumping. Thank we you. are hard. You, oh, please. Oh, Tris, leche's cake. Who doesn't love dessert? This decadent Mexican cake is soaked in a combination of milks and topped off with whipped cream and berries to make a magical treat. We are hard wired to care about each other. Mm. Right. And I'm just standing It was there. the sound. Because okay. Because when okay. it started gentle, the sound, it was the sound. Oh. It was, a, it was very- Go ahead, I, what you feel? Go ahead. Oh, I know you had it. I, my, I had two reactions. It, the first yes. one was the, your, your attentiveness was so uh, intriguing and appealing. And it's like, because even when, when I have sex, it's not that level of attention to, so, you know, the caressing and the, and the whispering, are you okay, how do you feel? You know, stuff that we don't ever experience, usually when we're having sex. So that was so appealing to me. But then with the, with the whipping, I can't help but think that it's associated with slavery. And, and, and I kept thinking, Toby, Toby, Toby. And that was jarring, it was like, <gasps> But you're, you're, as people of color, as, as black people, we're kind of hardwired. It's inherent in us. And it's, it's okay to feel that. But it's also okay to move past that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can acknowledge it and realize what you're doing and what you, what you have with someone else, it's like you're putting, Antonio put his trust in me mm -hmm. to make sure I took care of him. And vice versa, I checked in with him to make sure he was okay while I was giving him a vlogging. So if you don't have that with a person, then you may be experiencing something else. And it could be something that you don't like. But I get the under, I get why you say that and why you may think that, um, but it doesn't have to be that. Like Aaron, you said, it reminds you of- Slavery, that's what I, yeah. Being a slave. And being, when you say slavery um, and what I was doing to Antonio, it's, it, Slavery is somebody that has you bound against your will. Mm. Antonio allowed me to do everything to him that I did to him. Slavery is everything against your will, everything to punish you, everything to harm you, everything to hurt you. That's not my intention with Antonio. My, my intentions and my experience with him is giving him something that was pleasurable something that was something you don't go to that kind of mind space when you're being punished by slavery um and and being bound and somebody's beating you to kill you i'm not beating him to kill him it's impact play yes but it's not to kill him it's not to do harm to him it's not even to hurt it's not to hurt Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he may like he it. may feel something. Don't don't get me wrong. You will experience some level of um, intensity mm -hmm. with what I'm doing to you, but it's not to harm you in a in a in a way that will totally um, affect you for the rest of your life. Yeah. 
Have you had an experience like a racial dynamic? I have not. I, would, I won't. Intentionally, I will not put myself in that because I will um, encounter guys that will hit me up online and they want to do race play. Wait, what is race play? Race play is when you actually pretend and want to be a slave and they get to call you the N-word. Mm. And that's, that's not what I want to experience. That's not a positive experience. I want the experience in the scene that we have be positive. Right. Mm. Always, not negative. I don't want to be in my head thinking, why am I letting this person talk to me in this way? Because mm -hmm. then that turns on a switch for me that I don't like at all. Well, and I think what's really, really key is your, your choice of language. I think that what is just so amazing about you is the power of your voice, your tone, and the words that you choose. Because he said whipping, which it's actually flogging. But I did want to kind of ask, to, to go in with Aaron's... How did you feel? Um, yeah, like a, in terms of the, his feelings since you experienced it. So I'm curious as to what you have. Well, I think it started with he... Ex when you started with your explanation as to what was going to happen, because mm -hmm. uh, it was very clear there's certain things I don't like, right? Yes. Uh, certainly not giving up control is certainly not one of them. But I wanted to be in the spirit of, of the scene, so I decided, I, I made the decision that I was going to succumb to the scene. I, I had no question about you doing anything to me. You know, I, I, I knew that wouldn't happen, right? So the tone of your voice, all the things that you really um, pointed out helped set it up. And then you you said it best. You said, I trusted you and you trusted me. And, mm -hmm. and that really was the key because I felt cared for. Um, I thought it was going to be incredibly painful, actually, mm. and it really wasn't. And I thought, I just, just, just relax and go with it. How did it compare you. to your other experience? Because you mentioned you had had an experience before that was not as pleasant. None of these elements that he was talking about when he asked me earlier, and I said, yeah, they did talk to me. So they talked from an educational standpoint mm. about this is what vlogging is. This is, you know, this is what it is. Step up to the rack, right. kind of thing. Got it. But he created a, a relationship Got it. with the questions and the explanation as to what was going to happen. So I went into it. I tell you the, the big difference. When I was at Leatherfest, I went into it tense, um, not knowing what to expect. And I was actually thinking about that in this situation. I didn't come into this. I came into this open, and I remember asking myself as it was concluding, how much do we put on the experience that we have? Like, I don't know how different mm. the actual um, contact in terms of intensity was between that experience at that mm. time and now, and how I was open to it. And not sometimes if you can tense up and stuff don't hurt yeah, more yeah. than... That but I was very relaxed. Yeah. I, I was very comfortable. I felt very cared for. I mean, it was, it was a level of intimacy. Yes. Was it, was it erotic? You built. There was erotic element to it. Absolutely. I mean, it's, Did it, you feel it was very seductive. Built? It was very seductive. Okay. And I always tell people I like burlesque okay. as opposed to strip, oh. strippers. Yes. Did you kind of go into a headspace? Meaning? Meaning where you kind of lost yourself a little bit and just kind of let go and yes, just... Yes, definitely. Because that's what I term definitely. it, where you go into this headspace and you become, it almost becomes euphoric. Yep, that's the better word. That's where you go and that's where that's it can the, take you. Yeah, it and was more euphoric. that's a whole experience without having to have sex. Yes, it wasn't sexual oh, in that I'm way. So exactly. I can see this not being before. sexual. That's why I yeah. asked these questions, because I can see it being more like a massage. It was like a therapeutic. but not in the... Yes, it, it felt more like being cared for. Yes, I'm and, glad and not that so you said sexual. That. Even watching it, as, okay. as someone you watching that. it, um, I think it had so much to do with you because I also watched you go into a, a euphoric space. Where do you go in your headspace when you are exhibiting this level of control? For me, it's a level of, of care, mm -hmm. and I, I, I feel his energy. Got it. When I'm able to connect with you and feel your energy, then something unlocks for me mm -hmm. and then I then I can care for you and I can take care of you and be there for you um, in the way that you need to be in this experience mm -hmm. and so that makes me um, happy. I, I just wanted to say I love the fact you said it's not about sex that act you can make I 
make love, you know, you can have sex with anybody. It's come a time in my life that I didn't even see the eyes or the nose. I just saw the mouth moving. It's so disconnected. So the fact you brought that up, could you expand on um, that in any way? You can touch a person and have a connection with a person by doing little things to them. It's just the littlest things. I can touch his nipples, or I can touch your ear. You sure can. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, <laughs> Go ahead. No, please. <laughs> I love it. And, and you experience it. something, and then I'm connected to you, and I can help you feel that, and you, you're experiencing it in a different way than normally. I think mm. it's so fascinating to have alternative forms of intimacy. We are so, mm. you know, this is it. Get in the bed and bang, bang, bang. Mm. And it's like, you, there's a whole world out there. No, you don't have to do that. It's never, <gasps> and that's what everyone gets confused about this thing with uh, BDSM. They, they immediately think that it's something dangerous and it's going to harm you. Do you have a lover? I have a few lovers. <laughs> so um, I, I get something from someone Depends on who it is. I might do something different with you, and I might need something that I can't get from you from Antonio or from Chris. So Logical. if I want to get something different Don't from you, promise me a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, I, I, I'm practicing my knots over here. <laughs> and we want you to know that once you come to the house, you are what? Family! Oh, we thank you so much for coming. So, I think we call this episode 50 Shades of Gay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.